The first Bulls game that I ever watched live on TV was game one of the 1992 NBA Finals. As a six-year-old kid who loved playing basketball on the playground and seeing cartoons of a character playing basketball by the name of Michael Jordan wearing number 23, seeing that this Michael Jordan character was actually a real person and played basketball professionally was mind-blowing to me. And watching MJ play in that series alongside Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant, BJ Armstrong and the like, watching that entire series from start to finish and seeing the Chicago Bulls win the championship, I knew I was hooked. Despite knowing very little of the game of basketball at that time, watching Michael Jordan was awe-inspiring. And like every kid who grew up in the 90s, I wanted to be like Michael Jordan. I wanted to be like Mike. And from that day forward, I followed this basketball team from the highs of the dynasty winning six championships to the lows of the early 2000s, multiple botched lottery picks, multiple losing seasons. Being a Bulls fan had become part of my identity to my friends and family. And there really wasn't anything that was going to change that or take it away from me. But being a Bulls fan is not easy. I'm sure anyone that watches this channel would attest to that. The disappointment, the frustration, the poor product on the court, the level of incompetence at the top of the organization, being a Bulls fan will test your patience at every turn. But for us diehard fans, us sickos, we always seem to stick around. And look, I'm not here to try to tell anyone how they should be a fan, and I don't think anyone has the right to tell anyone else how they should be a fan. At the end of the day, I am always going to be a diehard fan regardless of how they show up season after season. But if there is one thing I hate, and maybe hate is too strong of a word, but if there's one thing I despise about being a Bulls fan, is that I have to live with this team, the team that I love and follow, be owned by one of the greediest, selfish, and incompetent people in sports, Jerry Reinsdorf, who has been riding the coattails and generating revenue without having to do anything to improve the product because of the global brand Michael Jordan built for him over three decades ago. It doesn't matter how good or bad the Bulls are, or have been, the money continues to be raked in from merchandise sales, ticket sales, partnerships, sponsorships, all of it, all because of Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, who hooked so many kids to basketball like myself and made them Bulls fans for life. Nothing that Jerry did. He didn't even draft Michael Jordan. He bought the team the year after he was drafted. Just a lucky businessman who made an investment at exactly the right time and has been getting paid dividends for life and not needing to do anything to change it. Now, why do I bring all this up? Well, I'm sure most of you know Jerry Reinsdorf also owns the Chicago White Sox. He actually purchased the White Sox before buying the Bulls back in the day. And for those that don't follow baseball, well, the White Sox have been historically bad this season and are on pace to finish with the worst record in modern MLB history since they implemented a 162-game regular season schedule. And so, of course, given how comically bad they've been, it's drawn some headlines about how a professional baseball team could be this bad in modern-day sports. And an article recently put out by The Athletic talked about the dysfunction at the White Sox at the highest levels and how the players have been handling their abysmal season. They then dove into the Reinsdorfs specifically and how the White Sox are run like a family business. They hire people that are close to the Reinsdorfs who really have no business in being in baseball and part of management. And how the Reinsdorfs are just kind of cool with keeping their buddies around the organization and not actually winning. Which, whatever, no skin off my back. I'm not a White Sox fan and I feel even more sorry for those that are than Bulls fans. But what was particularly asinine and troubling to me from this piece on the White Sox is that it was reported that when Reinsdorf was asked which matters more to him, the Bulls or the White Sox winning, Jerry, without hesitation, said the White Sox. Which, first of all, let's be clear, this isn't that much of a surprise as we've more or less known this for years and Jerry's preference for baseball, being a much bigger baseball fan than he is basketball, but we've never heard him openly state and admit that the White Sox and them winning matters more than the Bulls. Now, the reason this is so troubling to me is that one, Jerry actually chose a side without hesitation, a side between the two teams that he owns. Any rational, competent person, businessman, whatever, would give some BS diplomatic political response when asked this type of question publicly. It's almost like asking a parent which of your kids is your favorite. Like even if deep down you have a favorite son or daughter, you're not going to openly admit to that. And then the other reason this is troubling is hell man, the White Sox are the worst team in baseball right now. They're the worst team in history. And he wants to see that team win more. So what does that say about the Bulls? 
If the White Sox are this bad and he's not really caring that much to improve the product of that team by making this a close family business, what does that mean for the future of the Bulls? You think he's going to care about making this team better ever? If AK keeps screwing up, the Bulls continue to stay mid or just bad year after year, he's not going to care as long as AK keeps the team below the luxury tax, save money, cut corners, keep the fans interested just enough, and let the ghost of MJ keep printing that money. Do whatever the hell they want. And look, I know some people will say, well, maybe Jerry will sell. If he doesn't really care that much about the Bulls and the White Sox are more important to him, maybe he'll sell the team. This man is never going to sell a global brand with a global fan base that makes money regardless of how bad they are. Would you sell that if you were him? Low expectations to perform, minimal threats to competing products, a loyal customer base, the bottom line is still good year after year no matter what you do, that's a dream for any business person. And then of course the other piece of hope I often hear is, well Jerry's old, probably not going to be around much longer, yeah you're correct, he's 88. I mean, odds are he's only got a few years left, but we all know his kids are taking over the business. They already have him in any regards. It's going to remain with the family who don't really share any different sentiments to how Jerry has approached the Bulls. So all of these quote unquote, sell the team initiatives, the shirts, the petitions, the billboards that you see around Chicago from time to time, it's never gonna happen. They don't care what we all think. They care about the money and the money keeps coming in. And it's honestly the thing that I hate most about being a Bulls fan. Because watching the Bulls, being a fan of this team, is an escape. It's entertainment. It's part of my identity. But I also know at the end of the day, it's a business. It's almost like cheering for a company to do well. And it's a company that doesn't really care much about what you want or what you think and actually making the team better. And by me supporting them, it's just going to keep things the same and the Reinsdorf's getting exactly what they want. They know you're still going to keep coming back no matter how angry or frustrated you get. And that's absolutely asinine to me. And like I said before, I'm never going to tell anyone how to be a fan. I'm going to continue to watch this team. I'm going to continue to support the team, follow the team, go to games when I have the chance. And yeah, I'm sure some will say, well, I'm part of the problem then. No, Jerry is the problem. I don't care about Jerry. I cheer for this team, for the city, for the players, and because it's been part of who I am ever since watching the very first Bulls game back in 1992 when I was a little kid. Nothing is going to change that. I wish it didn't have to be this way. I wish we could be proud of who owned this team. But I'm not going to let my love for sports, basketball, and passion for this team be ruined by one lousy owner. I'd love to hear what you guys think, though. Let me know about it in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.